Hello, everyone. Welcome to Off the Block National Media Day. As we are now joined by UC Irvine. We have several media members present. We want to thank all of them for joining us. We'll start off with an opening statement here from um, Coach David Niffen. And then media members, um, if you have a question for Coach or the players, if you want to ping me in the Zoom chat, and we will go to you. So with that being said, Coach, we last saw you guys in March. You were picking up some wins, getting some good steam. How is your team looking starting 2021? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, we're just getting going in the gym. So I think one of the things we're super excited about is just even the opportunity to to start getting together and start slowly kind of lifting and touching the ball again. I mean, for most of these guys, this is the longest they've gone since they started playing the game without playing the game. Uh, and obviously, we're real fortunate to be in Southern California where they've been able to get out and get some touches on the beach, uh, you know, and. Joel, maybe at some point we'll show you his makeshift COVID weight room there at his apartment in Newport. But, uh, you know, we're, we're just grateful, uh, I think, just to, to be in the situation we're in, given everything that's going on in, in the world. Uh, so we're in a good spot. The guys that are with me today, just uh, for those of you that don't know, Scott Static, oldest guy, at least on this call, is uh, coming back for his fifth year COVID year. Scott's in the Paul Mirage School of Business. And uh, he can talk a little bit more about that at some point, but that's a, that's a pretty elite crew right there. Our school of business is pretty special and we're grateful Scott gets to have that opportunity. Uh, also sitting next to him there on that lifeguard tower down at, where are you guys, 28th? Yeah, we're just at 28th life tower station here. It's nice our view, nice. nice and beautiful. Nice. So, uh, Akil is probably tracking towards uh, sticking around for a fifth year as well and looking at getting his master's degree as well, just kind of. So we're going to keep him close to Scott over there. But, uh, and then Joel Schneidmiller on the call as well. I think Joel's down in Newport, probably at his, his house over near 39th. Um, so most everybody knows Joel, but uh, Joel's wrapping it up this year and looking to graduate, and we'll see where he goes after that. Well, um, you want – yeah, go ahead, Vinny. Oh, no, no, no. Go, go ahead, Coach. I'm sorry for, for cutting you off. No, no, I was just going to say, I know there's a lot of questions about, uh, you know, campus and, and rules and COVID stuff, and I'm sure a lot of that will come up. Uh, I'm on campus right now. You know, the way that we're structured here, we're feeling really fortunate uh, that we're able to be back on campus. Letter of the law on campus is you got to have your mask on anytime you're within six feet of anyone and all that stuff. Uh, but there's definitely some campus life going on. Just not a ton, as you can see. This is the middle of campus right now. And uh, so I'll just be walking around, and at some point I'll sit down if it gets spotty. But uh Sitting is the new smoking, so just trying to keep moving. We love this. This is awesome. Well, let's, uh, you know, Coach alluded to it, so let's go to Joel. Joel, can you talk a little bit about what this offseason has been like for you and just how you've had to accommodate COVID and still staying in top physical shape? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure for everyone it's been a lot different, you know, the past years and going into my year. Um, you know, I was really excited to get uh, really knew when we were going to start doing stuff. So usually I would have uh, gone home for a little bit more extended period of time back up north Bay Area. Um, but I had a good opportunity down here to live um, over the summer. And this is just a better um, just a better opportunity for me to get more touches on the volleyball. Having the beach right here is, you know, second to none. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been different, but just getting a lot of more beach touches rather than my usual, you know, indoor over the summer. So, but it's, I can't complain, obviously, you know, living in Newport beach, playing beach, going in the water every day. It's amazing. And once again, for the media members here, we, uh, if you have a question, we'll, uh, and we have one pop in, be sure to ping me in the chat. Let's go to Jonathan Bates of off the block. Jonathan. Scott, how much of a factor was playing for a relative uh, and determining coming back for your COVID year? Uh, yeah, and after five years, I feel like this question's been uh, pretty well flushed out. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been a big factor. I think playing for NIF is definitely definitely one of the reasons we're all here at Irvine. Uh, you know, he's, he's got a pretty special thing going on here. We all love what he's doing, and he's a big draw for everyone that comes to Irvine. So 
uh, coming back for the fifth year, I think there's a lot of great opportunities for me just play one more year, but also go back and get my master's in finance, which is an awesome opportunity and I'm thrilled for. So just, just the culmination of all those things, really. It's, uh, it's pretty special that I get to come back for one more year. It's, it's awesome that the NCAA allowed us to do that. Um, let's now go to Rob Asparrow of uh, Viral Volleyball, who has a question. I'm actually representing three media outlets, UCI Athletics, Volleyball Magazine, and the Volleyball Volley Podcast. But most importantly, boys, on the beach, Scott, Akil, and Joel, what's the surf report like? Because uh, I've been getting a lot of surf time with COVID hitting. <laughs> <laughs> it's flat today, Rob. There's not much going on at all. You're going to need to go down to the wedge if you want anything resembling a wave. You've got some guys trying to ride some, like, one-footers out here. It's all right, Joel, how about 39th Street? How's it going there? You know, I'm not on the beach exactly, but I couldn't really tell you. I'm, I'm one to stay out of the water and off the surfboard. I stick to the sand. Sorry, Rob. Good answer for Coach, so you don't get injured in the water. Yeah, Rob, oh, yeah. I've always been uh, two feet on solid ground. Don't go any deeper than you can't stand kind of guy. So. Well, seven feet is kind of deep, even for a 5'9 yeah, guy like me. So. stand most places. <laughs> so here's my question. This one's actually for you, Akil. Um, what did it mean for you to get the handful of starts towards the end of the last season and then to get the two final Big West Conference Freshman of the Week awards and then to make the Big West Conference all-freshman team to end that shortened season? Uh, I thought it was really cool that I got an opportunity to start playing at the end of last year, especially just because over like the fall and winter of last year, like I thought I really like worked on my game like like a lot and really improved in practice. And I also saw I also thought it was cool of like someone like JB, who was just unselfish and he moved himself from uh, outside to libero and like he also ended up being like really important for us at libero. I'm pretty sure he got defensive player of the week at the end there too. So just like him being open with that switch and like, I thought he was also like a really good mentor for me. We're both pretty similar style outsides, always giving me tips and practices. Just thought that was really cool of him. All right, let's uh, jump to uh, Tiff Wells and then we'll go to Jonathan Bates. Uh, Tiff? Coach Niffin, uh, this one's for you. To, uh, to hear the Big West Conference partnership with the Hawaii Tourism Authority and the fact that the Big West Conference Tournament will be sponsored uh, by the HCA for the next three years at least, and the two years uh, here in 21 and then next year in 22, uh, for the Big West Tournament to come out to Hawaii, what does that mean for the conference? Well, I think anytime you've got someone willing to put financial resources behind men's volleyball, that's a big deal. Uh, you know, and obviously something we know from just playing in the islands there's just really nowhere like that in terms of the cultural embrace of support or even Hawaii athletics. It's a, uh, it's a special place. And so we recognize, we recognize that opportunity. Uh, so from a financial standpoint and just kind of a, a relevancy of the sport in the industry of sport is a big deal. But then also just the opportunity to go out there and play is just super cool. Cause it's uh, it's just an awesome place to compete. Awesome. And let's uh, jump back to uh, Jonathan Bates and then we'll go back to Rob. Jonathan. Uh, last week, uh, uh, EC Irvine announced the retirement of uh, assistant coach Mark Presho. So um, question for each uh, of the players and uh, coach Niffin, what is the first word that comes to mind when you think of uh, Mark Presho? Uh, sorry with uh, coach Niffin. I would just say confidence. Uh, I would say demigod. <laughs> oh man, I got I got too many pressures running through my head right now, so I'd say probably appreciate it. I'd probably say resilient. Awesome. So, um, Rob, I hope you don't mind want to jump in really quick with a question here for um, Scott. I'm changing subjects a little bit. Um, last year, your block numbers were insane, actually, a record a record set. You've always been a good blocker, but was there something you changed about your game or an adjustment you made that led to you going from one block per game to two blocks per game on average? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think with blocking numbers, you always you can't look at an individual. You got to look at a whole team. So 
Uh, I've always had the the uh, great honor of playing next to some pretty great blockers through my career with Thomas Hodges, you know, Carl Applebach, Samir Harrisko, some really great blockers in my uh, younger years. But then just last year, we had a really solid defensive unit just with uh, Joel, Alex, Patrick, uh, Akil, JB, just solid blockers all the way around. So I think that as much as anything. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we just had a great defensive plan going into every game. We, we spent a lot of time scouting the other teams. So I think we were the most prepared, uh, most prepared team in every game that we played in, which, I mean, for blocking numbers, that, that, that's massive. Yeah. Rob, thanks for letting me jump, jump the line here a little bit. Let's now go to Rob Asparo with a question. Anytime, Vinny. This one's actually towards you, Joel. Uh, I mean, in my history of watching UC Irvine men's volleyball, which is a very long time, you are easily one of the most consistent and uh, most amazing performers to put on the anteater uniform. And even in your injury year, uh, you've got such great numbers and your highlight reel is pretty amazing. What are you doing that's keeping your game on point that seems to be trending upward every single year? Uh, I think, I mean, it's a big thanks to my teammates and coaches and honestly kind of where I live this is you know the volleyball basically hub of you know California and the United States almost so um just being around my teammates and being able to seize every opportunity I have to play volleyball just the I'm just on the ball just you know my teammates always saying hey let's go play beach or they saying like hey why don't you come in early let's get some the reps on the jump serve machine stuff like that um but yeah just a big thanks to my teammates and coaches and help keeping me motivated to get better every year i'm gonna give a little shout out to uh joel's parents here as well you know joel started on the beach pretty young with his dad there's some great photos of him just out there and joel's one of those guys that volleyball and, and the culture and just kind of the living the sport is just in his blood so when you grow up with it it's not like He's getting hyped all the time to play. He certainly has his ups, but it's just a big part of who he is, thanks to to Mark. And then, uh, you know, his mom, just in the way she raised him and keeping him on that, that good, clean diet growing up. And he's really learned how to take care of himself. And I give I give Marceline a lot of credit for that, too. So a little shout out to the parents when we can. All right. So we got a couple more minutes. I know the players have to run up to class classes. So um, I'll ask a question that if anyone has one final question. Um, Coach, I guess this question is for you or any player wants to um, discuss it. You know, I know your schedule hasn't been released yet, but you're kind of looking at it. It'll be, you know, possibly around 15 matches. So I want to ask, you know, 15 matches. Do you feel that that's going to be enough matches for you guys to be at your A game come postseason time and make a run in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, well, I guess it has to be. So, uh, yeah. Also, uh, you know, just a quick shout out to, uh, you know, with, with Coach Presho, um, you know, if you haven't had a chance to listen to the Viral Volleyball podcast with uh, the interview of Presho, uh, even if you, you only could make time to listen to the first 20 or 25 minutes where it's just truly the interview with Presho before the tribute videos, uh, there's just some really beautiful stuff in there. Um, and I think for those of you that don't know Coach Presho, it's a nice gateway, uh, nice gateway drug to kind of get hooked on, wishing you knew him a little bit more uh, and kind of seeking him out. Because I think one of the things that didn't get mentioned with Presh is he's not going anywhere, you know. And I think uh, we, we talk about it as some farewell, like like he's leaving the sport or leaving our team. And, and that guy's going to be at every match, even if it's just a, a really good looking cardboard cutout. Uh, for this season or, you know, future seasons where he's chirping at us from the sidelines and those courtside seats. And don't be shocked if he shows up in Hawaii there, Tiff, and swings by the media table. You know, I mean, there's another guy with volleyball in his blood. Uh, so anyway, just wanted to point that out. I thought Rob did a great job on that podcast. Well, only thing then that we segue to Rob, who's going to close us out with uh, one final question, Rob. All right. Well, thanks, Nip, on that that shout out. And uh, it was truly an honor to speak to Presh. I know he'll be around. And uh, I just don't want my cardboard cut out to be next to his because he'll make me look extremely bad because he's such a good looking guy. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, this one's actually for Scott. And if anyone else wants to jump in. But, you know, last season um, it was a highly competitive Big West conference. Um, a lot of talk was about Hawaii, no offense, Tiff, and then uh, UC Santa Barbara. But UC Irvine was right there in the fight, in the mix of things. What are your expectations for UCI's performance this season 
even with the modified competition, because we, we still don't know the format yet. We're assuming it's two, three matches against conference teams, but I don't know if there's going to be non-conference. So if you can speak to that or anyone else wants to jump in on that, that'd be great. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think like every team, we're, we're full of optimism right now. We had a pretty young squad last year, other than, you know, Joel and myself, and not a whole lot of experience. So one more year of experience for all those guys, you know, the Patricks, Alex, Akil, uh, some of the younger guys. It's going to be huge to get those guys a little more experience. We're already seeing those improvements in the gym, even not competing, you know, between our last match in GCU and, and right now. So we're already seeing these guys, these young guys, these old guys. Everyone's looking a lot better. Uh, I mean, obviously, Hawaii, BYU, UCSB, they're all going to be strong teams. They're going to come back hungry. They're, they're pretty senior heavy teams, too, making their last run. So we're going to compete. We're going to do our best. And uh, we're going to be grateful for this opportunity. 15 games, 20 games, however many games we get. It's, uh, if last year taught us anything, it's, it's enjoy what you got because you never know when you're scouting Penn State and the next day you're not playing Penn State anymore. <laughs> 